What if by shifting our views of the infrastructure of reality and how it is processed, we could radically transform our journey with manifestation? What's going on, Reality Hackers? It's Michael here today. I'm excited to chat with you about a little known statement from one of the world's most famous influencers, Napoleon Hill. Now, Napoleon Hill had a mentor, and his mentor's name was Charles Hannell. Now, Charles Hannell leveraged and learned the laws of success long before Think and Grow Rich was even a thing. And I love this because if you read any of his work, including the Master Key System, Charles Hannell speaks about the body in relation to manifesting more than anything else. In fact, he had a history uh, in doctoral studies and, in, and throughout the master key system is a ton of information related to specific ventricles and parts of the body and how they relate to consciousness and manifestation. So if you haven't picked up a copy of the master key system, go ahead and pick yours up today. Today, I wanna to talk about a very little known statement that he made in one of his books, The Master Key System. And the statement is very simple. I can only do to the extent that I can be, and I can only be to the extent that I am, and what I am is determined by what I believe to be true about myself. In fact, ultimately what he says is what I am it determines by what I, is determined by what I think, but I like expanding that to say that ultimately what I am is determined by my fundamental self-concept. If you read Neville, you know that your self-concept creates reality. Ultimately, what you believe to be true about yourself turns into what happens in your life. And I think this is a really powerful transformation when we stop approaching things from a external world perspective, trying to change the inner world and instead focus on the inner and allow the outer to change. See, most of us don't actually believe that if we work on changing our inner world, that the outer world won't change. But the truth is you can't change your inner world without the outer world changing because the moment you shift your psychological makeup, not only what you see changes, but what is available for you changes, what is possible for you changes. And as a result, your ideas of what are capable, what are enough, what are adequate, and ultimately what are available for you completely takes a different direction. And what I love about this is that the moment I begin to strip away any sense of identity in me that is limited, in other words, the more I stop identifying with any sense of limitation, the harder it is for me to believe any belief to be objectively true. Now, why is this important? Ultimately, if I can only do to the extent that I can be, and I can only be to the extent that I am, and what I am is defined by my self-concept, then it's really actually determined everything that happens. There might be anomalies, but everything is determined by what I believe to be true about myself. In other words, I will never do more than I think I can do, and I will definitely never act more and create better results than what's happening in my simple beingness, right? Ultimately, what happens here is I take on a self-concept. That self-concept defines everything that I am understanding, that I am rationalizing, that I am perceiving. All of the meaning I apply to what I believe to be myself ends up defining how I look at everything else in my world. So if I can only do to the extent that I can be, what I wanna do is I wanna extend out my ability to be. And what I mean by this is, here's the thing, can you sit in a state of joy, of peace, of abundance without twitching, without your body freaking out, without a story coming up as to why you don't need it, right? Can you sit in the beingness of expansion for extended amounts of time without being taken out of it and unable to get back in? When we talk about beingness, we talk about our ability, what we return to in the day when nothing else is going on. And in fact, Neville talks about this quite a bit. You are what you return to when nothing else is happening, right? Because that is where the subconscious mind is most directly connected to the conscious mind. Most of the time throughout the day when we're hyperactive, we're not focused on looking at our subconscious beliefs or ultimately our fundamental self-concepts and how those apply to what's happening in our lives. Most of the time, we're just focused on what is going on. Now, there's nothing wrong with this per se, but what we wanna do here is we wanna look at making this process easier. So how do I make the process of being, doing, and having easier? 
The first step here is to dive into the zero density state. Now the zero density state is something that we teach at Reality Hacker, which is a fundamental state of consciousness that consists of lightness in the body. Here's the thing about negative beliefs, and you'll know this if you've been diving into yourself. A negative belief carries density. The density is heaviness, and the heaviness often shows up as resistance, fear, anxiety, etc. right? But those are the surface level manifestations of what's happening underneath. All beliefs create density. Negative beliefs have more density, which in turn keeps us stuck. There's less freedom. So as we begin to move from a fundamental identity of I am this limited human having a more infinite experience to I am an infinite being having a human experience for a short while, all of a sudden, how I process reality, how I process what's happening is going to completely begin to change. And all of a sudden, my understanding of I can only do to the extent that I can be, I can only be to the extent that I have, and I only ultimately what I am is determined by what I think. When I begin to understand that I am an infinite being having a finite experience and I bring that equation back into play, I understand that what happens in me, the events that go on in my body are the events that will replay themselves in my world. Am I sitting here arguing with my spouse about something? Am I arguing with my boss about something in my head? These are things that are happening in my body. If they're happening in my body and I'm worried about them happening in my body and I'm focused on them happening in my body, there's a 95% chance that they are going to happen in our world. This is why... You don't need to focus on affirmations or vision boards or any of those different things if you are unable to get into a state of lightness, right? If you want to make this manifesting journey easier, your first quest is understanding yourself. You don't need to think about techniques. You don't think you need to think about methods. You don't need to understand frameworks. You need to understand that you are all imagination, right? This is exactly what Neville says. He doesn't say you're an individual having a, 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 an imaginative experience. He says, you are all imagination. And then he also says, Jesus is imagination. But then he says, your imagination. So I'll leave it to you to put the dots together and ultimately understand what Neville was implying there. But ultimately, when I begin to understand that I can only do to the extent that I can be, and I can only be to the extent that I am, I understand a couple things here. By stepping into a new self-concept, I open myself up to very many new possibilities. And by staying in that self-concept, in other words, walking around as though I am generating, right? Generating the events that would happen in the body, if I had what I wanted, because the brain does not know the difference between an external and an internal event. This is why what we focus on becomes reality. Whether we're focusing on something internal or we're focusing on something external, what we consume consumes us. What we want becomes us when we no longer identify as the fragmented individual, the human, but instead come to understand that we are all imagination, having a human experience. I can guarantee you that if you take this concept and you apply it to your life and you begin to understand and really seek to know what it means to be imagination, having a human experience, you will transform your life. And if you're looking for resources on this, check out the Bending Reality Retreat, check out the I Am Experience. All of this is in the description here. You are so powerful, but for so long you've allowed other people to tell you that you are not. And today is the day when you decide that you're done. Today is the day when you understand reality for yourself. Today is the day that everything changes. You are powerful, you are amazing, you are wonderful. I'm looking forward to hearing from you on this video. We'll talk to you soon.